All right, guys, it's finally here. We're putting up the fence. We're getting our materials, and luckily my brother-in-law has an auger, but we're gonna try a new product, or at least a new product for me. And this is gonna be a post hole foam. The directions seem pretty simple. You crack it open, uh, mixing everything together for about 15 seconds, cut the end off and put it into the hole, and it'll expand and set within about four minutes. Now we have 18 holes to dig, so we're gonna take this in sections. We're gonna do one side at a time and then put the posts in. So each one of these posts is three and a half inches wide. It's a four by four, and we want to space it approximately eight feet uh, apart. So we've measured that out, marked it, and we started digging. And the first complication we run into is each one of these holes seem to have at least one bowling ball size stone in there. Now here's where the first lesson is learned. It's hot out, and this was the middle of summer. So when we did this, the foam happened to be sitting out in the sun for a little bit. Well, that's gonna change the reaction time in this. So I started mixing everything up, waiting and doing the 15 count before I cut it open, but it started to expand on me and explode. So when it says that you should probably wear gloves and eye protection and a mask, they are not kidding. This thing exploded all over me. Now that we know the spacing is going to be 8 feet, we're going to be using one of the 2x4s to create our spacing when we start putting in our posts and start sinking it in. Luckily, because the foam sets so quickly, we only have to hold it for about 4 minutes while it sets. Now, because of the speed of the setting, it, that does make it a little bit easier, but creates some other complications. Where you would normally just create a bracer to hold it up if you're using concrete to hold it in place, this sets so quick, you wouldn't even really have time to set up the bracers. But because you're holding it, you're a little wobbly, and it does create some small little air pockets as it is starting to expand. Now, to speak on the strength of the foam itself, where it does seem a little bit wobbly in the hole sometimes, it does adhere very well to your skin and hair and creates a major complication for its removal. So I end up having to cut all the hair off with a razor blade. During the initial inception of this idea and how I was going to get it done, I really thought I could do this by myself, just renting a hydraulic auger, digging these holes by myself, because that first hole I dug uh, last year really wasn't that bad. It didn't run into that many rocks. Now, once my brother-in-law decided he was going to help me and we had that uh, simple auger, that one-man auger, we started digging and realized this was really not going to be a one-man job. We actually had to take turns using the auger, which only got us about six inches, and then we had to start using a pry bar, a post hole digger, and then eventually a trenching tool just to get these stones out. Even a jackhammer, a little hammer drill, just to get and break some of this stuff up. It was really a really difficult process. It was probably the most difficult portion of building this fence, and I don't think I could have done it without help. Once all the holes were dug, we ran a string along the middle of all the holes so we could line up all the posts. Again, we're using our post hole foam for sinking five of these posts into the ground. This entire process took us just over 30 minutes. Now that the fence posts are all in, we're gonna start building the fence. And we're gonna do this like an assembly line. 
So we got cattle panels for our inside of our fence that are 50 inches tall and 8 feet wide. Our boards are 8 feet wide. So what we're going to be doing is a fence that's going to be approximately 53 and a half inches by 8 feet. Now I get that 53 and a half inches because the fence itself is actually 50 inches tall. And then I want to be able to center that on the two two by fours on the top and the bottom. And those are uh, three and a half inches. So the 50 inches plus the three and a half inches equals 53 and a half inches. Now for the center spacing, we need a board, two boards on either side that are going to be 46 and a half inches. That is going to give us our exact dimensions of our outer panel that we can attach our fence to. Now to create that assembly line, we're going to cut all of our boards to 46 and a half inches. Now we are going to end up needing 16 of these panels because two of the other panels are going to be fences. So first up, we're gonna cut all of our center boards to 46 and a half inches and then we'll work from there. We're gonna end up with 32 boards. We're going to be using the Craig pocket hole jig to create pocket holes on both sides of the 46 and a half inch board. We're going to do two pocket holes on either side. This is what we're going to use to affix to the 8 inch boards to create our square. Now that our 46 and a half inch boards are all cut and the pocket holes are sunk into them, we're going to place those between the 8 foot boards and then we're going to preset all of our screws. Now that everything is pre-drilled, it's time to set all the boards. You're going to line everything up with the 46 and a half inch boards in between the 8 foot boards. It's all assembled, so now we gotta find center for the top and the bottom boards. The two by four, so the three and a half inches, so we're gonna find the center, which is one and three quarters inches. Now we're gonna be setting the cattle panel. So we're gonna lay it down on top of our box that we've created and make sure the top and bottom of the cattle panel line up with our one and three quarter inch marks. And then we're gonna be affixing each one of the corners using staples. These are gonna be fence staples. They're a little bit thicker and they need to be hammered in. We're continuing the process of affixing the cattle panel to the square by using these staples. We're going to continue to nail these in going about every other square all the way around until it's fully affixed and strong. Now it's time to start the process of hanging the panels. So the first thing we're going to be using are these metal brackets. They'll actually sit down at the bottom of the fence post and these panels will sit right on top of these. But first we have to line everything up. We've got our first one set and now we are going to make sure everything is level. So we're going to use a square, make sure it's all level on this side and we're putting it so it's even with the bracket on the other side. And then we're going to nail it into place. Now we want to set the opposite bracket so it's going to be level. So we're going to be running a string that's going to be traced along the bottom of the first bracket all the way across to the next 4x4. Four four. We're going to take all the slack out of the string to make sure it's tight and we're going to attach a level to the center of the string. We're going to move it up till we find a point where the level is actually level and then we're going to put our mark there and that's going to be the even point for the next bracket. Okay, 
So when we did our original line, we did do it all the way around. Now we're going to use that same bottom line for the next bracket, but we want to make sure it's level, so we're going to use our level to make sure it's even with the bracket across the board. Then I started making these lines at the top of the bracket. That way I knew exactly where it was supposed to go because I'm coming in from a different angle and I can't always see the bottom line. So I can match it up with the top line that I've created and make sure it goes in the right spot every time. I will be using the same procedure with every post, all 18 posts, all the way around the fence line. This next bracket is actually a U-shaped bracket. It's being held in place by one screw or nail. And it's going to be affixed at approximately 51 inches from the bottom portion of our lower bracket. This is set in place to help hold it so there is no side to side or back and forth motion from the panel itself. Now this bracket's only being held in place by one nail. That allows it to swivel just a little bit. That way we can feed in our panel into the canted bracket and allow that to swivel up and then drop into the lower bracket which has a base for it to sit on. Now on the outside of each one of these brackets, I do have holes that way we can affix them directly to the fence. I'm using one and a half inch screws and screwing them directly in through the hole and into the fence itself, securing everything in place. When I set all the posts, I was pretty good about ensuring that everything was at the eight foot mark, but there are a few in here where the panels are gonna be just short of eight foot or just slightly bigger than eight foot. So I do have to do some modifications and I have to each build each panel individually for each section. Now there's a big gap here, and it's because the board is leaning just a little bit this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix it by ratchet strapping the top of it, bring it closer together, and see if we can sink it, sink it in then. One of the biggest pieces of advice I can give while reflecting on this project is that you should take your time. Budget your time for errors and problems that might arise. And for us, one of those big problems was digging those holes. That took easily 15 to 20 hours of the 45 hours we spent on the project. Next, even though I used that expanding foam for the posts, I found that they are pretty wobbly and have a lot of movement. So I probably wouldn't recommend it nearly as much because the concrete is just going to have a much firmer hold on those 4x4s. The next one is kind of a twofer. One, 
maybe don't buy all of your supplies right away because you never know what type of problem you're going to encounter after those posts go in. And that is where I lead into my next one. Build the fence panels as more of a craftsman style. Measure between the posts and then build the panel to fit that post. You may come to find out those sections might be slightly larger and you're gonna need some two by four by 10 footers. So keep that in mind. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll leave a list of my supplies and some of the equipment I use in the description. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.